The seam looks fine. The welding tents can be moved forward again. The current section is almost finished. Another week, perhaps, and then the workers can enjoy a few days off. They've made faster progress than expected, thanks not least to their foreman. He's the first to arrive in the morning and the last to leave. Paul Stagaförde has built pipelines all around the world. And at 69, he still enjoys joining these enormous pipe segments into endless conduits. The terrain here is a huge challenge. We have to work under any and all conditions, whether it's pouring rain and then muddy or snowing in winter. We've always worked through any weather, and that toughens you up. They've been toiling here for a year already. Anyone who loses heart now just has to look to the boss for inspiration. A foreman has to be able to do everything the others do, and he has to be able to do it better. That's what makes a good foreman, because otherwise people just do as they please. Some 2,500 men are working on this pipeline. Most are skilled tradesmen, such as the welders who fuse the pipe segments together. When the pipeline is completed next year, most will have to start searching for a new job. A few kilometers further, the finished stretches of pipeline are being put into place. This one consists of 27 segments and weighs almost 500 tons. Regardless of the terrific weight, the pipe layers have to work precisely down to the last millimeter. If all the machinery on this construction site were an orchestra, the foreman would be the conductor. Peter Indoff has vast international experience, but it took time to get used to the scale. In the beginning, we needed six or seven hours to lay a kilometer of pipe. Now we can do it in three or four, and then it's history. The whole team rises to meet the challenge. Luckily for the foreman, some of his crew members are from the former East Germany, and they were already acquainted with giant pipelines. As young men, they went to Siberia to build pipelines as part of a youth program. These guys are no strangers to extreme conditions. Even so, last winter in northeastern Germany was tough for them. Your knees get stiff up there. You start to get cold and try to keep moving somehow. But you're in a cramped space after all. While the pipe is being laid, you have to stay up there and wait, and you think, please, God, let it be over soon. <laughs> the next section of pipe awaits. The anti-rust insulation passes muster. Piece by piece, these men have been working their way forward since September 2009. The toughest part so far was a swampy region where their machinery kept slipping, but they met that challenge too. Every pipe goes into the ground and each one gets dirt thrown over it. And then the pipes are welded manually. These are real specialists at work because the seams have to withstand serious pressure. When the gas from Russia starts flowing through here, it will do so at 100 bar. In the fall of 2011, it's all supposed to be completed, and more than half the pipeline is finished already.